we always said from the beginning that we would be led by her. So if she didn't feel comfortable with it and it caused problems with her, then we would stop. But fortunately for us, she's loved every second and she's just jumped straight in the deep end with us So, and continues to swim with us. Grace is our birth child. She was two and a half when we started the fostering process. The best thing about Grace is her outlook on life, how funny she is, how clever she is, and what a sassy little character she can be. Even if a pain in the bum at times. <laughs> yeah. The favourite thing about Mummy is that she takes care of me and she's done lots of hard work at fostering loads and loads of babies. She loves me and she helps me when I've fallen over or hurt myself. But me and Simon decided to become foster carers. I'd had some experience of it before of friends that's parents kind of did it and it got my spark of interest. But at that point I was still young, still going out. It wasn't until we moved here and we had the accommodation to do it and kind of me and Simon had a chat and was like, why don't we start now? So we did. So we looked into it and yeah, we've never looked back since and now five years down the line. The process of becoming a foster carer is a lot simpler than what people think. When we moved to Bedfordshire, um, we picked up the phone and phoned Central Bedfordshire Council um, and made an inquiry that we were interested and we wanted to find out more. And as soon as we did that, they sent someone round and we just had a really friendly chat about, they were explaining to us about what they do and we were kind of telling them how, like, how we work. Um, and it was just to know if you want to then take that next step and you're, you, know, you definitely want to start your fostering journey. Luckily, they liked us and we liked them. So then you then go on to the official um, kind of application process. You get assigned an application social worker and that person stays with you the whole way through. Um, and they just go through all your personal details, um, kind of how you want your fostering to work with the family that you've currently got. It's really simple. Um, and they explain to you at the very beginning what the process is going to be look like so you don't get any nasty surprises. We started our application process in the October. Um, we went through a few training courses along the way um, and then it was just visits from the application social worker out to us when it suited us. And then we went to panel in the February um, and passed with flying colours. Um, and then, yeah, that was that was our fostering journey. And then after that, you still are required to do training, um, depending on your family setup. Um, I'm required as the main foster carer to do four four training courses a year, um, and Simon is required to do two a year because he works full time. Um, application process and how long that takes. A lot of people seem to think that that takes a really long time. An adoption process, an application and a fostering application is two different things. Uh, one takes considerably longer than the other. And they have that really horrible stigma around it that the children that come into care are naughty and bad behaved and they're going to ruin your home and they're going to be violent. I think it's really important to try and stress that it's not like that and the misconceptions that a lot of people have um, need to be unfolded and people need to actually know what it is like. I think people get scared about fostering is because some of them have their own kids and they think that they can't handle it. But with me and mummy and daddy, it's really fun and you can also play with the baby and it will distract your oldest kids to stop annoying you because they could play with the baby. <laughs> Fostering's not only been really positive um, for myself and Simon, it's also been really positive for our extended family, our immediate family and our big circle of friends. And they're all there to support me and they're all 100% behind me. So yeah, they're all proud and they look after the kids if I need it, regardless of how long they're here for. So yeah, really positively. Any concerns that me and Simon had were more um, around Grace 
um, because obviously she was only two and a half, how that was going to affect her, the comings and goings of the children. So actually, it's, it's worked out brilliantly so far. It's fun to have all the new babies and I really love them staying with us for some time. But when they leave, I get a bit sad. The happy part of them growing is that we get to go up to their houses and we get to meet up and I get loads of presents from them for my birthdays. And um... So as a family, um, we have gained a lot of experience from fostering. We've learnt a whole new way of life. You know, there's a, a whole different world out there that unless you're in our fostering bubble, you really, you don't know it's out there. Um, and we've learnt a lot from the children and the situations that they've come from. You know, we've learnt what we take for granted and also opening Grace's life and her eyes up to a, a whole different world as well. And actually that we need to give these children, you know, everything that she's had growing up. And you'll have someone new every day to play with and you'll meet new people when they go to their new families. To be fair, we've also gained a whole extended family because not only do we now have a whole new friendship group of foster carers, but we also have a whole new extended family of adopters that we've moved our children onto. Once you have um, finished all your training and you are a fully fledged foster carer, you are assigned your own, um, what they call a supervising social worker, um, and they will be with you for the foreseeable, um, and they are your go-to. So they come to visit you every six weeks, um, and then in between that, any support that you need with anything, whether it's yourself, your children, um, you go to them. If it's extra support for any placements you have, you go to that child social worker. So there's always a route, whether it's your own social worker or, your, or the placement social worker, you would go to them and then they will then direct you or get you the support that you need, whatever it may be. Since we've been doing it, if there's anything that we're not getting that we feel we need, we've just had to ask for it and we've been pointed in the right direction. You also have um, the support of your fellow foster carers. So we meet up three, there's three support groups in a month um, where you can just meet up. Um, there's usually social workers there as well. is probably one of the most asked questions that I always get when people find out that I'm a foster carer. You're never going to live the footballer lifestyle being a foster carer, but that's not what the job's about. The job's main point is to give these children what they need. Um, but you do get the financial support for them being in your home and to look after them on a day-to-day -day basis. You become part of the fostering network um, which is nationwide um, and they have a lot of events on. We do a fostering walk with them, which is a charity walk every year that they do. They can do specialist mortgage advice for foster carers. They do um, discounts of holidays um, and the local authority that we work for, they also give you what's called a max card and it just then entitles you to all different discounts to all different places to visit, to go, holidays, uh, you name it, it's on there. Contact with birth parents is usually is usually in most cases. Um, obviously, some birth parents won't want any contact with the foster carers. Um, handover would be done in a different way. But um, for me, all of mine, I've had contact with the birth parents, um, and actually, we've we've struck a, a good relationship. You then can create a more positive relationship with the child as well um, when you're picking up and dropping off. You can do classroom-based training courses. You can do online, like, e-learning courses. Um, depending on what it is as well, they also will class. If you've read a book that's appropriate to your placement and the type of foster care you provide, or videos, films, anything like that, that you, any research that you might have done on something, they'll also take that into account as training and tick that off. You have your core, your core modules that you have to do every three years. They have a whole list of training options and you can just pick which ones take your fancy. If there's anything that they're missing or any training courses you think 
that other foster carers would really benefit for. They're really, you know, you can feed that back and they will look into it as well. Any children placed with us um, when they move on, we'd like to think that they have learnt a new normal and how to have fun and be loved and love back and just be able to lead a really successful life because we've put the building blocks in place for them to be able to do it. When I'm older, I would certainly love to foster some more babies. I want to be a foster carer forever. If there's even an inkling in your mind about considering doing it, then my one and only bit of advice would be please, please, please pick up the phone and inquire more because there's so many children out there that need our help. Um, and the more of us that can do it, the more children we can help. And that's always going to be a positive thing. So please go and inquire. If even part of you wants to, go find out more.